I'm going to give you something here which is going to be a wonderful base out of which you can make at least four different meals. Hi, I'm Carrie Davis Munro, single mum of three teenagers, and I have over 20 years experience in the field of well-being, physical education, food and nutrition. So you're going to start with your base, and in this case I started with some organic soya mints. Um, I have used corn over the years, um, and sometimes I will just make a base just from vegetables. But this is, I'm, I'm liking this at the moment. I wasn't, I was a little bit sceptical, but actually you soak it beforehand, and then you, um, you, you rinse out all of that water and drain all that away. And then you're left with some quite um, full-bodied um, soya. And literally, it just absorbs all the flavours that you put in there. And it's good. So I use this. You could choose, as I say, to use turkey mince. You can use beef mince if, you, if that's your thing. Um, or you can just make it from vegetables. <clears throat> or chicken mince. You can have some chicken breast, mince them up and throw that in. We start with a sofrito, um, just chopped onions and chopped garlic. So I used a huge red onion in this case and three cloves of garlic, which I grated. And I just cooked that off in the pan, first of all, with a little bit of olive oil. And then to that, I added slowly, when that had gone translucent, I then added my mushrooms, my peppers, my celery, um, and not my courgette just yet, because that cooks, that cooks very easily. So not the courgette, but I added everything else. Um, cooked that off and then I began to add the body of the sauce which in this case was a tin of um, organic chopped tomatoes and I used half an organic um, jar of passata. So mix that in, I'd added my soya by that stage so the sofrito, add the soya, add the tomatoes and then you're going to look to flavour. I flavoured with some red wine so I used a healthy glug of red wine. I always buy these little tiny bottles because I really only use red wine for cooking. So a glug of that, a um, couple of tablespoonfuls of tamari, some Worcester sauce. I use two sorts, but um, that's a lovely Worcester sauce here. A little bit of lemon juice and then um, some dried herbs. And I use some paprika. I love paprika and I throw it in a lot. So that's your, that's your base. And that gives you a wonderful bolognese sauce or a bolognese type of sauce. And then once you've got that sauce, it's up to you what you want to do with it. But this bolognese sauce can be used to have with a really good quality pasta, not the white stuff, but you can have it with a wholemeal pasta or a spelt pasta. You can then turn that into a lasagna by making a white sauce. And I would make my white sauce using a soya milk. Um, and perhaps vegan cheeses or sometimes um, sheep's cheese. I love making um, a lasagna using manchego. And then you layer that with spinach in between and you can really pack that full of the vegetables. So you can do a layer of the lasagna, a layer of this, a layer of spinach, and then a layer of your white sauce. And that's wonderful. Um, you can use this as a chili. So what I would do to this as I was at, I would add extra either fresh chili or um, chili pieces. Um, or chilli powder if, if that's what you've got at home or a little bit more Tabasco and I would spice it up and then I would add my kidney beans. In actual fact you can add your kidney beans to anything. You can have a bolognese sauce and add your kidney beans to it which is just going to increase your fibre and be better for you. But that's how you would get your chilli and serve that with your brown rice or your Camargue rice and your wild rice. Or I can change this into something like, and this is a vegetarian version, so this is going to be a shepherd's pie. So what I'm going to do here is layer my baking tray with my, my sauce and then on top I'm going to add some sliced, sliced potatoes. So I've literally steamed off my potatoes, um, <clears throat> sliced off, uh, steamed off my potatoes earlier. I'm going to bring my potatoes to the chopping board and you could mash these. Um, one of my teens has a problem with the texture of mashed potatoes. So, um, you could mash them if you wanted to, and you, again, you can do that <coughs> with some lovely um, different milks. You can do it with some butter if you want to, some salt, some pepper. But I want you just to slice the potatoes relatively thinly. Jed, do you want to have a go at doing this with me? Yep. Okay. There we go. So if you can do a couple of those for me, double quick. There we are. Right. And I'm just going to throw some pepper in here. Move it 
it a stir. If your team's are a little bit um, not so sure mm. about having a big chunks of vegetables, well, what you could do if your teens, are, if they're going to have a problem and say, I don't like peppers, I don't like celery, I don't like courgettes, then what you can do is make yourself a tomato sauce first of all. So you would have done your onion and garlic, then add your chopped vegetables, then add your tinned tomatoes and your passata, and then blend it. So you've literally got left with a passata, but you've hidden all those vegetables in there so they wouldn't see any of them. So this would look like pure mince. So, sorry Jed, I need to hand you a few more potatoes. There you go, you take them. So I'm gonna put that in there. And I want to make sure I've got all of it. And this is gonna serve six at least with a, with a really good meal by layering my potatoes. Thanks, Jed. And these knives are, are super sharp because, um, you know, if you're worried your teen's going to cut themselves, they will more likely cut themselves with a blunt knife. And as I say, the good thing is that this, you, you can use this for so much. Another thing that um, I've done before is made a lentil um, shepherd's pie. So, you would use maybe a mixture of lentils, pre-lentils, other lentils, and then put all of your same sauces in. And that's delicious. So it's d literally a lentil base, and I called that lentil and tamari pie. But it's another version of this. And you can turn this into anything, as I say, from your pasta sauces to your lasagnas to your chilies to your, you know, a, we call it a shepherd's pie, but obviously a shepherd's pie would be made with, um, but with lamb, which this isn't. So we've got a really good covering there. And I'm not going to throw these away, so I'm going to use all the potatoes that I've got just to go around the edges, and cover. You're not mashing. Not mashing. Um, I, uh, I said earlier that Jed has a problem with mashed potato with the texture. So therefore, I always tend to um, steam off some potatoes, leave them till they're relatively firm so that you can chop them and they keep their form like this. Um, but they also go a lovely, crispy, crunchy um, texture. Um, when you've done that. So then I'm going to uh, find my tomatoes. I've got a number of cheeses in here, I've, from vegan cheeses to um, vegetarian to all sorts. So I'm going to just, today I'm going to grate a little bit of Parmigiana over the top, which is going to help turn it a really beautiful, crispy, golden brown colour. And again, cheese of your choice. We don't do um, much dairy here, but the reason I have Parmigiana is because it's nearly 100% um, fat this cheese so you haven't got the intolerances that you sometimes might have and we don't have much cheese to be fair so a little bit I'm okay with all pepper and then I'm gonna stick a couple of tomatoes You're a tomato fiend, Jed, aren't you? You can eat those. Jed eats tomatoes like fruit. So I'm going to put my tomatoes there. And that's ready to go in the oven. Probably around 20 to 25 minutes at around 180. It's a wonderful one to keep in the freezer as well and to add and to adapt. So that's your base from which you can basically go in so many directions.